In this video, I'm gonna share with you three new SMA niches that are gonna be incredibly hard in 2022. There's gonna be a select few people that tend to be ahead in the space that are probably gonna be pretty mad at me for revealing these booming niches. And there's three untapped niches that I'm about to share with you are all within the online space. No local business crap. And if you're a subscriber of this channel, you're probably not surprised by that. And the final thing I wanna say before I get right into it is that I've actually experimented with all these niches myself. I've actually helped brands within this space. So I have experience in this space so basically I'm not just talking out of my ass and with that being said let's go right into it the first niche has a bunch of different spaces within it and the reason why that is is because the first niche capitalizes on web 3.0 if you don't know what web 3.0 uh, actually is let's hop on my computer and uh, here's a pretty good definition in this Medium article. It says, Web 3.0 enables a future where distributed users and machines are able to interact with data, value, and other counterparties via substrate of a peer-to-peer -peer networks without the need for third parties. Basically, it's all about decentralization. I'm sure you've heard of uh, crypto, NFTs, and all this stuff. This is what you can capitalize on, and this is going to be a massive niche in 2022. So to give you guys a bit of a comparison between Web 1.0 and Web 2.0, Web 1.0 is basically all about the e -com bubble, right? The dot-com bubble. Essentially, the first few e-com sites uh, within desktop. Then we go from desktop to web 2.0, which is all about mobile and social media, right? And so we've got the social networks, we've got things like Facebook, we've got things like Uber as well, right? And web 3.0 is all about AI-driven services, just like we're seeing here, right? And as I said, decentralized uh, data architecture. So this is a pretty cool uh, diagram that I think explains it really well. I appreciate Fabric Ventures uh, for this uh, cool article, but um, yeah, that is Web 3.0. Now, obviously, Web 3.0 is massive, so let's get more granular, let's specify, because as you guys know, if you're a subscriber of this channel, in order to have huge accelerated success with your agency, you have to narrow down and you have to build a monopoly agency within that specific space. So here are a few spaces that you can capitalize on within Web 3.0. So the first place within uh, Web 3.0 is crypto wallets, um, like for example, Zengo. I've actually done a little partnership with this company. Just like Zengo, there's a bunch of crypto wallets out there um, that are looking to get more customers, right? And get more users, especially in the crypto space that is uh, booming right now, right? And that a lot of uh, late adopters are getting into. So they contacted me to uh, essentially bring more awareness to their uh, brand, not through paid ad services, although that is something that I could have offered, but mainly through content, okay? But it just comes to show that these platforms are focused on user acquisition. And so this is a massive niche. Crypto wallets and anything related to storing crypto, it could be, for example, a hard wallet. That is gonna be a massive space. The next space is a thing called DEXs. Now, if you guys are not very into the crypto space, um, you know, quite frankly, I'm not a massive crypto head, but essentially what a DEX is, is a decentralized exchange. Essentially, that, that's where the word comes from. And examples of this, is, for example, Pancake Swap. This is a, a really big one, I believe, within the Binance network. I'm probably I'm probably boosting that. What I do know is that Sunday Swap, which is another DEX, okay, is within the Cardano um, network. Okay. So this video is not about me getting super in depth into crypto. If you want, you can do your own research into what a, a decentralized exchange is, into what a DEX is, and what type of DEXs are out there. But again, this is going to be a massive space within Web 3.0 and uh, a space and companies that are going to need more users that want more users. And that's where you can come in with your paid ad services and your user acquisition services with your agency. So that is the second space. And the third and final space is called DeFi. Now, maybe you've heard of this word, but never really knew what that meant. Essentially, what DeFi is, is decentralized finance. So there's a lot of decentralized finance platforms. I've actually worked with a few. I featured one in one of my agency vlogs, but this is an example. Yearn is a DeFi platform. And there's a ton of different DeFi platforms, all wanting more users, all needing paid ads and user acquisition services. And then the final space that I haven't actually experimented with myself, and that is why I'm not really getting into it too much, is NFTs. Again, I hate talking about something that I haven't done myself. So I haven't offered any services within the NFT space, but knowing that Web 3.0 is going to be massive, NFT is part of that. We've got decentralized digital art, which is essentially what NFTs are. And you can use paid ad services and any user acquisition marketing service to get more people interested in a project, interested in a creator, interested in an art, uh, et cetera, et cetera, right? So NFT is the fourth space that I'm sure is gonna be massive. Again, I haven't experimented with it myself, but I'm sure there's gonna be a lot of people making a ton of money within that specific niche with their agency in the upcoming months and years. If you enjoyed that first niche, the second niche is equally as massive, if not even bigger, and that is the creator economy. But Jaime, what is the creator economy? I've heard that word, creator, but 
what's this whole creator economy thing about? Well, let's dive right into my computer. And here we've got a, a little definition. It's defined as the class of businesses built by over 50 million independent content creators, curators, and community builders, uh, including social media influencers, bloggers, videographers, et cetera, et cetera. So any business that derives from content creators, people that post content online. For example, here I am shooting a video. I would consider myself more an entrepreneur than a content creator, but I'm technically within the creator economy. Now, as you guys know, social media is massive and it's only getting bigger. And every single year, there's more and more content creators. So for example, here we've got a Yahoo Finance article saying that the creator economy is worth over $104.2 billion an increase in uh, increasing daily. And here we've got another article by Forbes saying that out of the 50 million creators that exist today, around 2 million are professionals. Keep that in mind, 2 million are professionals. All these professionals either don't know anything about marketing, okay, or are too busy creating content to even think about all these brands that they can create or how to run their brands properly. Because oftentimes content creators, they are really good at creating content, but they're not so good at building or growing businesses. However, the good news is that there's a ton of money in the space. And again, this is coming from someone who's in this space himself and someone whose agency has actually worked with brands created by influencers. But point is, this is a massive and very neglected space. And the reason why I say that is because a lot of people, when they hear of helping content creators, they think of info product businesses, right? And that's all good. There are content creators out there selling info products, right? But the vast majority of content creators are selling products. A few examples of massive, massive influencer brands. We've got Mr. Beast Burger. Ooh, nice. We've got Chamberlain Coffee from Emma Chamberlain. And we've got Full Send by the Nelk Boys. And these are massive, multi, multi million uh, e com brands that these influencers and their marketing teams have built. So, can you come in for smaller influencers or maybe as big, even, right? And do their marketing for them, do their paid ads for them. People that don't have enough time because they've got a ton of brand deals, uh, a ton of content to create and a ton of things to do, right? People that probably don't have a clue as to how to do paid ads or anything about Facebook ads because they spend most of their time thinking about what content they need to create. But people that know they're passing on a massive opportunity because they've got this insane audience, they're not really utilizing to the full extent. So that is the second niche, the creator economy, a massive, massive space is only getting bigger. And those agencies that cater to the needs of these influencers who wanna build incredible brands, who wanna grow their existing brands, they're gonna win big. But before we get into the third and final very juicy niche, the only thing that I ask you is if you're enjoying this video so far, drop a massive thumbs up, help start with the algorithm, the whole channel, I'd really appreciate it. Hold on, good. Let's get right back into it. The third sub niche is a very interesting one, equally as profitable, equally filled with opportunity. And it's what I call behavioral based sub niches. These are sub niches within e-commerce that are not bundled together because they sell the same product, but because they share a specific behavior. So they tend to be also purpose driven brands. Examples of this are vegan brands, sustainable brands, mindful brands, feel good brands, right? All within the e-com space, all selling products, but they often have a purpose attached to it. And so there's a lot of my students that, for example, want to build an agency, but also want to be mindful of the environment, right? And so they go into sustainability or they want to help brands that are pushing um, consciousness, right? And so they go into yoga, meditation uh, brands, right? And so it's an incredible way of tapping into one of your passions, right? And helping brands that you truly believe have a greater impact on the planet. And these spaces are only getting bigger because one, there's quite a bit of social pressure pushing a lot of brands who haven't, for example, implemented sustainability to the full extent just yet to embrace sustainability and to really care about the planet. And secondly, I truly believe that society is becoming more conscious. And so they're looking into brands that not only do they like their products, but also know that when they're buying those products, they also have a greater impact on the planet. And those, my friend, are the top three, very untapped, very new, but extremely profitable, filled with opportunity SME niches for 2022. A little final note, because I always uh, like to leave you guys with a little final note, is that if you're already running your agency and you're having success within the e-com space, obviously, don't just FOMO into the spaces, right? If you've built a monopoly agency within a, a particular small space and you're crushing it, don't just FOMO into these spaces, okay? It's very, very key that you understand that the same way that I don't FOMO into NFTs and crypto and all this stuff, right? I'm not saying these other financial vehicles are not worthy of paying attention to, but just understand there's a cognitive switching cost. And when you take the eye off the ball from something that's already working for you, from something that you've already put a lot of effort and time into, and you get the shiny object syndrome and you start looking at other stuff, then that's when you can run into trouble. So I still stand by this niche as being of insane potential and, and insane value, but more for those who have struggled within the SME space, 
maybe have gone down the local uh, business route. Maybe they're still, you know, trying to run ads for restaurants and dentists, and maybe you're having success with that. But most people are not. And I know this from talking to a lot of agency owners at this point. Maybe you've struggled going down the local business route. Maybe you're looking to make that transition because you just see that there's a glass ceiling when it comes to local business and you cannot charge as much. Or maybe you're just getting started within the space. These are incredible niches to look into. So I just wanted to say that because I'm really not a big fan of these content creators, gurus, whatever you want to call them, um, that talk about these new opportunities and the new thing to get into. I just don't really resonate with that, right? Yes, these are opportunities, but do not keep the eye off the ball if you've got something that's already working for you. So with that being said, I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, again, drop a massive thumbs up, helps out with the algorithm, the whole channel. Really appreciate it. And I'm going to be putting out a lot more content on these niches and how to be successful with them because I've actually had clients within these spaces. And if you want to see that content and you haven't subbed to my YouTube channel, make sure to do that and hit the little bell icon so you don't miss these upcoming videos. Hope everything's going well in your journey and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.